I'm here with Alexander McCurse, Editor-in-Chief of the Durant. Alexander, I have Zero Hedge in front of me, and it's a story, the lead story, and it's on Deutsche Bank. And with all the news cycle that's going on, you know, the UK ambassador, the Trump, uh, you know, the border in the US, uh, the Epstein case, a lot of people are not taking a look at what could be one of the biggest financial catastrophes, not only to plague Germany, but the entire Eurozone, the entire world for that matter. And that's what's going on at Deutsche Bank. Let me read you the title at Zero Hedge and you can comment on it. The title is this, Alexander. The mood is pretty hopeless. Seen outside Deutsche Bank offices evokes Lehman collapse. That is a very strong statement, very strong title, uh, very worrying title. Is Deutsche Bank going to be the next Lehman Brothers? Well, I don't know, but I would not be surprised if it is, because I've been hearing stories about Deutsche Bank for years. I mean, if you follow the financial news, which I do, you will know that Deutsche Bank and indeed the German banking system in general are not are not in good shape. Well, I said the German banking system is not in good shape. Deutsche Bank is in extremely bad shape, it has never really recovered from the 2008 crisis. And I think if you need to understand what happened in Germany, in the 2008 crisis, you need to understand one important thing, which is that the Germans and the Europeans never did to the extent that the US did, uh, which was sort out their problems in their banking system. Now, I know a lot of people will say that the bailouts in the US were very, um, were very unequal and very unfair and that the U.S. banking system remains riddled with problems, which it does. But nonetheless, it's still the case that the U.S. Federal Reserve Board made a serious effort to get on top of the problems in the U.S. banking system in a way that never happened in Europe. They may not have done it in the right way. They may not have done it as thoroughly as they should have done. They may not have punished bankers in the way that bankers ought to have been published, punished in the US. But in Germany and in Europe generally, they didn't even go that far. And the story that you tended to get in Germany was that, you know, our banks are fine. Everything that's gone wrong has nothing to do with our banks. It's because Anglo-Americans have been engaging in financial speculation and Southern Europeans have been borrowing too much. And that's left us thrifty Germans in all kinds of problems, picking up all sorts of bills from all sorts of people, and that we don't really need to carry out any fundamental reforms. So they didn't do any real change to their banks. They, they propped them up to some degree, but they never really addressed the underlying problems. And the reality is that the German banking system evolved from a situation in the early 1980s when it had been a very sober, very, you know, very conservatively run banking system dominated by three big banks, Dresdner, Deutsche Bank and Commerzbank, and with a whole, you know, phalanx of smaller folks banks and uh, regional banks that supported German industry into a situation where it became very internationalized in ways that German banks never really understood. And there was this effort within Germany to build up Deutsche Bank as the big international investment bank that would take on Goldman Sachs. And of course, whatever one thinks of Goldman Sachs, I mean, at least they know what they're doing. The people in Deutsche Bank and in Germany didn't because they hadn't done that sort of thing before. So they got very overextended. They got very, uh, 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 they, they mixed up, they messed up their banking system very badly and they never sorted out the problems. And sooner or later, it was bound to happen. It's been bound to happen that the problems would catch up with them. 
and if this article from Zero Hedge is to be believed about the mood being as bad as when Lehman Brothers crashed, well, it could be that time's up now. Okay, so mass layoffs, um, restructuring, is what does this tell you? I mean, is, is this something that Deutsche Bank can get through? Is this something well, that the German taxpayer is going to have to have to take a hit on? Is the government going to get involved? Is Deutsche Bank, you know, you mentioned the U.S., is Deutsche Bank too big to fail? Yes, it is. It's too big. To, for, for Germany, it's too big to fail. I mean, um, in, in international terms, it's far from being, you know, one of the big, big banks. But in German terms, it's a huge bank. And not only is it a huge bank, but the entire German economy, I mean, is closely integrated around it. And of course, not just the German economy, but the European economy, because if Germany gets into severe trouble, so will the rest of the Eurozone. I mean, so if there's a crisis in Germany, if there's a crisis in Deutsche Bank, there'll be a crisis in the German banking system. If there's a crisis in the German banking system, there will be a crisis in the German economy, which is looking increasingly fragile anyway, as its exports machine is starting to stutter. And if the German economy goes into crisis, then the European, the Eurozone economy goes into crisis. And if the Eurozone economy goes into crisis, so does the EU. I mean, it's, you, you can see the thread uh, 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 very, very easily. So I think the German government will do everything it can to stop Deutsche Bank failing. Now, the problem is that the Germans, during the great Eurozone crisis of 2009 to 13, went around lecturing all sorts of people in Europe, imposing austerity on them when, they're, you know, when other people's banks ran into trouble, and uh, 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 imposing all sorts of rules, like the fact that depositors have to make contributions if banks go into problems. And those rules have become enshrined now within the structure of EU law. And what may now happen is that the Germans, having done things like that to Portugal and to Spain and to Greece and to Cyprus, and in Cyprus, the idea of getting depositors to pay into banks. That was where it was first launched. And it was launched in a most disastrous yeah. way. And the Cypriots, as I well remember, stood firm and refused to do it. But, you know, that is now the policy. Now, will the Germans, having imposed this on everyone else, allow it to happen in their own country? I don't think so. I, I think there will be huge resistance to doing that. But I think the Germans will insist on bailing out their banks. I think there will be huge levies taken on the German taxpayer. Uh, Germany now has imposed itself a law that forces Germany to run a balanced budget. How do you do that if you're bailing out banks? And of course, they are very unhappy with the uh, Eurozone's monetary policies uh, as they've been followed by Mario Draghi and, uh, uh, and probably Lagarde, who's going to be taking over. So how are they going to cope with all of those things? So I, I think we could very easily see within the next few months, if there's a real crisis at Deutsche Bank, all of this catching up on Germany. And um, those of us who um, have experienced the policies Germany has imposed on others will, I think, feel a certain schadenfreude, if I can use a German word, if it now all comes home to roost in Germany itself. So you're thinking more along the lines of a tax bailout, a government yes. uh, bailout and not a, yes. a, a bail in, like essentially what they tested, what they floated on Cyprus. I, I Th that's an impossibility that, to have any kind of I, bail in. I think, a, I think that is a political impossibility yeah. in Germany. I think if they do anything like that in Germany, uh, German bank depositors will uh, explode. 
And bear in mind, we're talking about a German coalition government that is incredibly fragile. I mean, uh, uh, the SPD is bombing in the in the opinion polls. I mean, it's down to something like 15, 14, 15 percent, and it's still falling. And uh, uh, many people in the SPD are unhappy about being in the coalition. And uh, Angela Merkel's CDU isn't doing terribly well either. I mean, they're under 30 percent. They're steadily polling under 30 percent now. And Angela Merkel is supposed to be leaving uh, in a few years anyway. So, I mean, it's a very, very fragile government. I think if there's any talk of a bail-in, uh, I mean, it will, the government will collapse and Germany will be in a political crisis. And at that point, by the way, I predict the IFD will revive. Uh, 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 and, and, well, I don't know to what extent it's actually declining anyway, but I mean, I, I think it will, it will explode in strength. And uh, for all these reasons, I don't think a bailout, a bail-in will happen. But given that Germany has now passed a constitutional law that prevents it running a budget deficit, there would have to be very sharp tax increases. Because, of course, Germany anyway has quite quite a high sovereign debt position. So if Germany is obliged to increase taxes in order to cover the cost of Deutsche Bank's bailout, that's not going to make German uh, 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 voters very happy either. And at a time when the German economy is already looking very fragile, it's about, you know, most economists would tell you it's the worst thing you can do because uh, you're taking demand out of the economy right. at the very moment when there is a banking crisis, reducing demand even further. And at the very time when your export machine is stuttering because countries like China aren't buying German goods at the rate they once were. So, I mean, you know, it, it, it would be... A perfect storm. Finally, Alexander, what does this say about Angela Merkel? I mean, this well, is just the last pillar of her failed uh, leadership to to break. I mean, just about everything else is broken, whether it's immigration, whether it's the integration of the EU, her foreign policy, uh, Germany's reputation on the global stage. Would you say that the economy and the banking oh, system, that's that's pretty much the last part of the, the last leg of that table to, to snap? Absolutely. And I, w I would say that without any hesitation. And I'm going to say something else about Angela Merkel. I mean, this has been one of my most consistent criticisms of Angela Merkel as chancellor. In my opinion, she took over a German economy that was very strong because of the changes that her predecessor, Gerhard Schroeder, had done. Now, there were still many things that needed to be done, but she was not a force for change or for reform. She was a force for stagnation. She left things as they were. Things seemed to be going very well because Germany was being propped up by the euro, uh, the euro being an undervalued currency as far as Germany was concerned. So that made German exports very strong. That fed back into Germany. That made Germany very, you know, the German economy seemed like it was doing very well and very prosperous. But she allowed taxes to rise. She allowed welfare spending to get out of control in order to appease her SPD allies. She didn't really look at the underlying problems of the German economy, the fact that it ceased to be innovative in the way that it used to be. I mean, Germany has fallen far behind countries like the United States and Britain, for example, in IT technology. I mean... To, to an extraordinary degree. She's left the banking system in a mess. And um, she's um, entirely failed to preserve and build on the uh, um, legacy, the economic legacy she was bequeathed by Gerhard Schroeder. An economy, it's important to stress this, an economy is always a work in progress. You can't, if you are the responsible leader of a country, ever allow, ever allow things to just stagnate. Eventually, if you do that, 
they will deteriorate and beyond a certain point, they will fall apart. That's what happened, by the way, in, in Russia under Leonid Brezhnev. Brezhnev left things in Russia uh, to stagnate. And in the end, they all just, you know, rotted and disintegrated. And Merkel did the same in Germany. Merkel is Germany's Brezhnev. If I can give an example of a completely different leader who, like Merkel, is often considered a conservative, Putin has not acted in this way. He has been a very purposeful and very dynamic leader who changes things repeatedly. He doesn't go in for, you know, constant revolutionary change, but he is always improving the system. He's much criticized pension reform last year being a case in point. His VAT increase this year was also a case in point. The pension reform makes sure that the pension system in Russia is properly funded. The VAT increase makes sure that uh, infrastructure spending is properly funded. He's made been very careful to ensure that the banking system in Russia is uh, stable and strong. Merkel wasn't. Merkel, as I said, is Germany's Brezhnev. And Germany is going to have many years after Merkel is gone of paying the price. And if I may say one thing, if Deutsche Bank fails, on, Bre uh, on Merkel's watch, it will be nothing less than justice. All right, Alexander Merkers, Editor-in-Chief of the Duran, thank you very much. Guys, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below. Click on the notifications bell to make sure you get notifications every time we push out a new video. Please donate to us on PayPal, Patreon, and on Subscribestar as well. That really helps us out a lot. Follow us on Instagram, the Duran underscore com, and you can get an audio copy of this video. Follow us on iTunes and on SoundCloud as well. And of course, you can go to the Duran shop and you can pick up mugs, t-shirts, v-necks, tank tops, hats, stickers, you name it. We got it. And it's all great quality. Alexander is wearing his Duran oh, long sleeve shirt with the embroidered double with my eagle. Embroidered, my embroidered double eagle, which is, of course, the Duran symbol pointing both to the east and the west, which we cover uh, uh, with equal uh, uh, accuracy and attention to factual detail. Not everyone does, but that's why we have the double headed eagle. And of course, I'm doing it wearing this beautiful this absolutely beautiful long sleeved uh, uh, a t shirt, 100% cotton, beautifully, beautifully dyed, incredibly comfortable. Um, I'm wearing it at the moment because I'm in the countryside where this is a perfect thing to wear in the countryside. I've been walking my dogs. I sent you a photograph of myself doing it. I've been going up uh, some very high hills. We don't really have mountains in England, but we've got some very high hills with my dogs. You can see them there in that photograph. And you can see me wearing this absolutely amazing shirt, which help is equally comfortable when it gets quite hot, as it did do whilst I was on this walk. And also when it gets quite cool and it was also raining at one point and it was fine through all of that. So that tells you what an amazing shirt t-shirt this is this long sleeve shirt now unfortunately the one thing i can't show you today i know some of our viewers like me showing them is my is my magic mugs which keep me so uh, uh, um, energetic and full of ideas and refreshment as i invigorate myself uh, of drinking tea from them this is because at this moment in time my wife and father-in-law are drinking tea from our mugs but um i would remind you that uh, the mug i like has also got our double-headed eagle on it. Um, another mug has, of course, the Russian uh, uh, Moscow eagle with the St. George and the dragon. I'm in the process of getting more mugs from Alex, mugs for other members of my family. One of these mugs will have the symbol of the Alpha Force, which is Russia's elite special forces unit. I mean, I, 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 who've done quite extraordinary things. I mean, they fought uh, 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 jihadi terrorists in the Caucasus with extreme efficiency 
Uh, I mean, you know, they they are a, a force. Russians will tell you they're, they're even better than Delta Force and the <laughs> SAS. Now, of course, every country, every, every military country, yeah. boasts that their special forces are the best. And who am I to say? I mean, I don't know. But, but uh, Alpha Force are really tough. So help yourself by buying, buying some of our mugs. Help ourselves, your, uh, yourselves by buying some of our shirts and help the Duran also. All right. The link for the Durant shop is in the description box down below. Alexander McCurse, Editor-in-Chief of the Durant. Thank you very much.